The following PowerPoint presentation will give you a quick overview of the Meringotomy and Tube Skills Lab. The goal of the Skills Lab is to enable procedure competency for novice surgical residents. By the end of the session, participants should be able to understand the indications for Meringotomy and Tube Placement, properly perform an exam of the ear under the operative microscope, show efficiency in using the operative microscope and micro-instruments, demonstrate proper tube placement and insertion, and describe the possible complications of meringotomy and tube placement. It is important to understand the anatomy of the external ear canal, tympanic membrane, and middle ear in order to successfully perform a meringotomy and tube placement. The external auditory canal is comprised of the lateral and medial portions. The lateral portion is cartilaginous with thick, loosely applied skin containing ceruminous and sebaceous glands. The medial portion is very thin skin directly over the bone, no skin appendages. The canal curves anteriorly and medially in adults, which may obscure the anterior tympanic membrane. It comprises two-thirds of the total canal in adults, less in infants and children. The middle ear is an air-containing space which communicates with the nasopharynx via the eustachian tube. It is normally sealed laterally by the tympanic membrane. Its function is to transmit and amplify sound waves from the tympanic membrane to the stapes footplates, converting energy from air medium to a fluid medium of the membranous labyrinth. The tympanic membrane is an ovoid, three-layered structure consisting of squamous epithelium laterally, respiratory mucosa medially, and an intervening fibrous layer. It normally has a conical shape with the apex maintained medially by the support of the malleus. The ossicles are the bones which are involved in sound conduction. From lateral to medial, there are the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. The handle and lateral process of the malleus is attached to the tympanic membrane and can be easily seen on physical exam. The long process of the incus can often be seen through the posterior superior quadrant of the membrane. The stapes is attached to a foot plate, which is in direct contact with the fluid of the inner ear. After an overview of the indications, principles of, and potential complications of meringotomy and tube placement, participants will practice the techniques using the surgical skills box model with an operative microscope, meringotomy instruments, and grommet tubes. Participants will focus on proper orientation of the ear and identification of landmarks, proper placement of meringotomy, and various tubes. At each station, there will be an operative microscope, a surgical skills box, otologic microinstruments, and various pressure equalization tubes. The operative microscope is equipped with a 250 millimeter lens. The surgical skill simulator is fabricated with an empty cube cardboard box. A 3, 3, a 3cc syringe is cut to a length of 2.7 millimeters. A latex glove covers one end and is secured with a rubber band. The syringe apparatus is placed in a hole created in the center of the box. The required otologic instruments are a speculum, meringotomy blade, various size suctions, an angled pick, and alligator forceps. Pressure equalization tubes of different shapes and sizes are also available. Ensure that all the supplies needed are at hand and that the operative microscope has been examined and balanced. The appropriate focal length for the distal lens is 250 millimeters. Position the patient and identify the correct ear. Place a speculum in the ear canal and remove cerumen or debris using spoon and suction. Examine the tympanic membrane and identify the landmarks. The short process and umbo of the tympanic membrane are visualized. A radial incision is made in the anterior inferior quadrant of the tympanic membrane. The middle ear effusion is gently aspirated. Care is taken to not suction directly on the tympanic membrane. Grasp the tube with alligator forceps on the outer flange and insert down the speculum. The inner flange is placed through the meringotomy incision and the tube is left in position. Repeat the above steps using various size and shape tubes. Ensure the lumen of the tube is not occluded. The procedure is broken down into five easy steps. The steps are, number one, visualize a tympanic membrane. Number two, make a meringotomy in the anterior inferior quadrant. Number three, suction fluid from the middle ear. Number four, insert the ear tube. Number five, 
suction the ear tube. The following video clips will demonstrate steps one through five. Okay. 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 Yes, sir. Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> What? We're recording again. Yes. We are recording. We have stopped. Again, the five simple steps are to visualize a tympanic membrane, make the myringotomy in the anterior inferior quadrant, suction fluid from the middle ear, insert the ear tube, and suction the ear tube. Common errors in myringotomy and tube placement include trauma to the ear canal, which can lead to bleeding and poor visualization, improper placement of the myringotomy incision, an uncontrolled depth of myringotomy incision can result in middle ear trauma and bleeding. One should always be aware of potential middle ear vascular anomalies. Intrusion of the tube into the middle ear leads to further unplanned procedures in order to retrieve the tube. The goal of dedicating your time to surgical skills labs to gain procedure competency in myringotomy and tube placement and to hopefully decrease the incidence of errors and complications in the clinical setting.